transcribed. Ladies and gentlemen, the Railroad Hour. And here comes our star studded show train. Tonight, the Association of American Railroads presents the stirring Rudolph Frimmel operetta, The White Eagle, starring Gordon MacRae and his lovely guest, Lucille Norman. Our choir is under the direction of Norman Luboff, and the music is prepared and conducted by Carmen Dragon. Yes, tonight, another great musical success is brought to you by the American Railroads, the same railroads that bring you most of the food you eat, the clothes you wear, the fuel you burn, and all the other things you use in your daily life. And now, here is our star, Gordon McRae. Thank you, Marlon Miller, and good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Tonight, Lucille Norman is the beautiful Indian maiden, Winona. My name is Captain James Wingate, of Her Majesty's Service. You're next in line. Someday you will be Earl of Kernel. No, Diana. Now tell me, what's the trouble? You know how Henry loves to speculate in the stock exchange. Well, he borrowed some money from the regimental fund and lost it. Oh, no. Tomorrow they audit the fund. The money's gone. They'll send him to prison. Diana, listen to me. I'm the poor cousin, the black sheep of the family. If I go away, they'll think I did it. I, I won't let you take the blame. Yes, Diana. I've been wanting to go to America. I have a dream over and over of a girl. A girl? Yes. An Indian girl. She seems to put into words my, my own loneliness.
This is the voice I hear, Diana. From somewhere across the sea. I shall leave for America tonight. Oh, no, Jim. In all these years, Diana, you and I have had just about an hour together. Bits and pieces of minutes and seconds. A glance, a smile. But one hour was enough. Great open space. Well, I just hope none of these bad men put any great open spaces in me. Captain. No Captain stuff here, Jeremiah. I'm just Jim Carson. Yeah, that Cash Hawkins. He's threatened to kill any Englishman west of the Mississippi. Oh, now, what are you afraid of, Jeremiah? When we were in the regiment, the whole army's threatened to kill us. Listen. What? Well, that melody. I don't hear anything. Jeremiah, leave me alone a moment, will you? Sure, but... I hear you. I hear you again. I did, far across the sea. But I can't see you. Where are you? Won't you turn toward the sun, White Eagle, and see? Why, it's only you, child. Just an Indian girl. I thought I was hearing music like a memory. I sing the music you hear in my heart. That is why I come. Is a song all our maidens sing to the men of their choice. Well, then you, you must not sing that song to me. I do sing to you, Mr. Jim Carson. What's the name Jim Carson mean? 
Well, in Indian language, I I suppose it would mean heap big Englishman afraid to go home. Make your home here. My song means that. You are the white eagle. You are my man. So, your man must be a chief among your people. No, you do not understand. My race is older than great trees, old as mountains and plains. I am the last child of that race. There is prophecy which tells of one coming from strange lands beyond the sunrise. A white eagle from his home beyond the dawn. What is your name? Winona. Your name makes beautiful music, Winona. Well, you must not think of me as a husband. Someday you understand. Always I keep myself because of you. Winona, go now. All right, Englishman. Don't turn around. Cash Hawkins. I said I'd shoot any Englishman who came out into this territory. You wouldn't take my warning, Cash. All right, Britisher, say your prayers. In three seconds, he'll be dead. Now, Cash, give a man a chance. One. Two. <laughs> who did that? Who shot him? Your life is my life. Our lives always won. Winona. Winona has small silver pistol. Cash Hawkins was that man. Deserved to die. He tried to kill my white eagle. I owe you my life, Winona. Long ago, an Indian maiden saved the life of one of my people. And they became as one, husband and wife. I wish this too, for us. For you and me, Winona. Would they laugh at you, your friends? Would they not call you Flaw Man? It doesn't matter. Oh, white eagle, the prophecy has been fulfilled. Turn for the second act of The White Eagle in just a moment. Have you ever wondered what a railroad freight car or a locomotive costs? Well, at today's prices, the average freight car costs $5,700, and a diesel locomotive unit costs $150,000. This makes the cost of motive power on a train pulled by a three unit diesel locomotive almost a half million dollars. And many thousands of these new freight cars and locomotives must be bought as part of the railroad's continuous, far-reaching improvement program. It is estimated that the railroad should spend more than $2 billion in the next two years for new freight cars and locomotives alone. This huge expenditure would pay for 200,000 urgently needed freight cars and about 7,000 units of new locomotive power. But this is just one of the never-ending improvements of railroad plant and facilities which it takes to provide the transportation service required by America's highly productive economy and growing national defense. These new locomotives and freight cars and the countless other improvements being made on the railroads are important to all of us. For by expanding their carrying capacity, the railroads will be better able to do the big transportation jobs required today and be more ready to meet the demands which possible war would produce. And by further improving their efficiency, the railroads will be able to perform still better transportation service with increasing economy, which is so necessary in meeting today's higher operating costs. Yes, to improve their service and to help keep transportation charges lower than would otherwise be necessary, the railroads will go ahead with their huge orders for locomotives, freight cars, and other railroad equipment, as long as vital materials are available. And earnings will permit. Now 
Now, here is Act Two of Rudolph Rimmel's The White Eagle, starring Gordon McRae as Jim and Lucille Norman as Winona. <laughs> Happy anniversary, Winona, my wife. Oh, my husband, 72 moons ago today, you no, told... No, 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 not 72 moons, six years. You have no right to teach me English things I can't remember. <laughs> you have no right to teach me Indian things I can never forget. Daddy, Daddy! And best of all, you gave me a son. I still am hurt my knee. Well, let's see that. It hurts. Oh, no, now, brave men don't cry, not out here, Hal. You remember our motto? Sure. That a boy. Smile, Don, you smile, Don, you smile. Care and despair is out the star. All for the call of the spring. Life honestly ain't such an awful thing. What do your shot will do? You better now, son? Sure. Bossman! Bossman! Yes, Jeremiah. What's the excitement? A special t- stagecoach just arrived. There's a lady in it from England. She says she's looking everywhere for a Captain James Wingate. Diana. Winona, my darling. Take Hal and let me see this woman alone, please. As you say, my husband. Come, my son. Can we play cowboy and Indians, mother? Can the Indians win? Hello, Jim. Hello, Diana. I've come to tell you, my husband is dead. He confessed his crime before he died and cleared your name. That makes no difference now. You can come home. You're the Earl of Curhill, Jim. No, Diana. This is my home with my wife and my son. Bring them with you. No. When Ona was born in the open, under the stars, England would be a prison. But think of the opportunity for your son. For my son. Diana, look there, toward the sunset. There they are, like part of nature. My wife and my son. Mama, where did Daddy go? Only a short distance away. Not far. Not far, my son. When will I be old enough to have a tomahawk and a war club? Not for a long, long time. How many moons? You must not say moons. Months. Years. Come, sit in Mother's lap. When I wake up, can I be a soldier? Maybe. Your daddy was a soldier. Someday I want to be a soldier. With a long, shiny sword and pretty red coat and gold buttons. I want to be a soldier like daddy. Dream on, my son. Mother will walk until your dreams come true.
Winona. Your son sleeps, my husband. I want you to meet an old friend. This is Diana. I am honored. It is my honor, Lady Curhill. What does this mean, Lady Curhill? Someone has died in England. I'll, I'll explain later, dear. We have honored guests. I shall go prepare a supper. Thank you, dear. Give me the boy. He dreams. He dreams. Your son. She's very lovely, Jim. Once Winona saved my life. But she did more than that, Diana. She gave me a whole new life. I must stay here with her. I will not go back to England. This is the son of your love. He is the future Earl of Curhill. You must think of him. If you refuse to go, at least he should have every opportunity to be brought up in England. But there are schools, libraries, museums. Diana, leave me here for a moment in the sunset with my boy. Of course, Jim. England and my boy. covered with leaves. There is darkness in forest, and you cannot see the way to go. How do you always know about these things? I know, and I am afraid. We three belong together. We will stay so, always. You also would like to go away. Of course not. Not without you. But perhaps little Hal belongs there. I thought when we were married, and when our son came, that he would be grateful to my people. But I know it cannot be. Well, no, no. I give him to your people. My blood, my life, my yesterday, my tomorrow. If we go to England, we'll go together. No, he must not have Indian mother. So, this silver gun, which saved life of my white people. No, no. We're not to stop. Diana, thank you. Thank you for knocking the gun out of her hand. Well, no, you would give your life for us. My husband. Daddy. What's the matter? What's wrong? I was just dreaming. Nothing's wrong, my son. Nothing. Only that your mother is a great woman. The daughter of a chief. The mother of a chief. A chief of your people, Winona. And of my people. We shall stay here together always. Always. We shall make this a part of England. Daddy, Mother promised that when I woke up, I could be a soldier like you were. Very well, my son. Attention, my soldier. Daddy will teach you a song. A song of honor. One he has not sung for many... <laughs> for many moons. Where the 
made an Indian sign, which means that lovely Winona, Lucille Norman, will be back in just a moment. And meanwhile, our thanks to the other members of our cast, June Whitley, Dan O'Hurley, Dick Beals, and our entire company. The White Eagle, with book and lyrics by Brian Hooker, Russell Janney, and W.H. Post, music by Rudolph Frimmel, and based on Edwin Milton Royal's The Squaw Man, was dramatized for the Railroad Hour by Lawrence and Lee. The Railroad Hour is brought to you each week at this time by the American Railroad. It is estimated that the railroads should spend well over $2 billion in the coming two years for new freight cars and locomotives alone. For to provide the big transportation that our big country must have takes constant improvement in railroad plant and facilities. So the railroads are going right ahead, building and buying new freight cars and new locomotives, just as long as materials are available and their earnings will permit. And now here again is the charming Lucille Norman. Thank you, Gordon. It's always an event for me to come visit you on the railroad hour, and I especially enjoyed singing the White Eagle. Ah, uh, yes, Lucille. This is a story that asks the question, can a titled Englishman find happiness married to our gal Winona? <laughs> <laughs> well, who are you finding happiness with next week, Gordon? Well, Dorothy Kirsten is our guest, Lucy, mm-hmm. and we're going to sing the great Jerome Kern music of the cat and the fiddle. Wouldn't miss it. Good night, Gordon. You are wonderful, Lucy. Good night. Oh! Well, it looks as though we're ready to pull out, and so on to next Monday night, and the cat and the fiddle, this is Gordon McRae saying good night, everyone. The White Eagle was presented by special arrangement with Sam's Whitmark Music Library. Gordon McRae can soon be seen starring in Warner Brothers' About Faith. Our choir is under the direction of Norman Luboff, and our music is prepared and conducted by Carmen Dragon. This is Marvin Miller saying goodbye until next week for the American Railroad. Now keep tuned for your Monday night of music on NBC. The preceding was transcribed. Next, hear the telephone hour on NBC.